Scientists, conservationists, and bird watchers are increasingly voicing concern over a problem that many people do not know even exists, the impact of free-roaming cats on our songbird populations. The domestic house cat is one of the world's most effective predators. It is estimated that there are 80 million pet cats and another 120 million feral cats in the United States, and their population is growing. Each year, cats left to roam free or that are feral kill hundreds of millions of our nation's birds, putting additional pressure on the populations of many species that are in decline. Most people are unaware that their domestic cat that is well fed uh, can take up on average one bird per day. I don't think many people realize the impact that dropping off unwanted pets is going to have on the native wildlife. This was a cat attack. Uh, victim and it's not, a lot of times you can tell because there's feathers missing. She's not missing feathers in her wings here but she's only got about two tail feathers left here on her tail. Unfortunately in her case um, she probably had a puncture wound that we just can't see. It could just be a tiny tiny little puncture wound but all it takes is a little bit of the cat's bacteria from their mouth to be toxic to a little bird like this and although she had antibiotics uh, she just still didn't make it so there might have been internal injuries we just can't see. While we don't have exact numbers on the impact of, of feral cats' populations in Texas, we do know that nationwide they kill hundreds of millions of birds every year. When you consider the fact that feral cats' diet is 20 to 30 percent made up of birds, then you know that there's going to be a fairly substantial impact on the ecosystem. One controversial strategy being used to deal with the growing feral cat population is trap, neuter, and release, or TNR. Feral cats are caught, neutered, and released, and are then regularly fed. The idea is that by spaying and neutering all of the cats, the colony they live in will diminish over time and eventually disappear. Dr. Paul Barrows is a retired Army veterinarian with 40 years of experience dealing with wildlife health issues. Numerous veterinary, conservation, and uh, public health organizations um, do not support TNR. And some of the reasons that we don't is we see it as a risk to animal health, to public health. Um, we feel it's an ecological disaster. Uh, we feel that it is a public nuisance, creates a public nuisance. And last of all, and perhaps most important, is we feel that it's inhumane. We know that the life expectancy of uh, abandoned cats and TNR cats is considerably lower than it is on those that are inside cats. They're subjected you know, to bad things in the wild that happen to them. You know, dogs can come after them, they can get hit by cars, and then there's always disease. One of the most closely managed TNR programs in the nation is at Ocean Reef, a private gated community in North Key Largo, Florida. Orcat was founded in the early 1990s because we had a overpopulation of feral cats at Ocean Reef. Uh, there was there were over 2,000 cats and they were causing problems with the uh, homeowners as well as the uh, native wildlife. So ORCAT was founded to humanely reduce the cat population through trap, neuter and release, TNR. And since uh, that time we've gone from uh, over 2,000 cats to under 500 cats. And that is including a lot of uh, drop-offs and not being perfect with the spay and neuter portion of the uh, program. We have a, a staff that goes out to uh, feeding stations where we have the, the managed uh, care of the cats. The goal, of course, is to have a non-breeding population of cats. The TNR program at Ocean Reef, though perhaps the best in the nation, is still proving ineffective at eliminating the problem. Fifteen years after it began, and despite having a full-time staff and a part-time veterinarian, 500 feral cats continue to roam the community. More typical is the situation at A.D. Barnes Park in Miami, where a managed TNR cat colony has actually grown over time. They had hoped that the catch, neuter, and release program would uh, decrease the population, and exactly the reverse has happened. What we're finding is, is that uh, a lot of people, when they see cats here, uh, cat owners that don't want their cats anymore, they use that as, as an excuse to leave their cat here as well. And, that's caused the cat population to, to increase exponentially to where there's now uh, probably somewhere close to 100 cats just in this small 60-odd acre park. Trap, 
neuter and find a home is better. Bringing them here causes problems with uh, the public seeing a cat colony and then using that as a um, an excuse, if you will, or a reason to then add to the colony. And so I think trap, neuter, and return actually uh, perpetuates this problem. I am familiar with trap, neuter, and return programs. I've actually taken part in trap, neuter, and return programs. I have never seen one that has been successful in removing all or most of the cats from any area. The limited experience I have had with spay and return areas, they have not been successful because they're generally not able to catch all the cats. They don't go and catch them every week. Trap, neuter, and release has very little to offer in the way of demonstrating elimination of cat colonies through that technique. It just, the data is just not there. In addition to being ineffective at addressing the problem of feral cats and their hazard to birds and other wildlife, TNR programs and the cat colonies they perpetuate contribute to other problems, including endangering human health from rabies, toxoplasmosis, and other transmissible diseases. Um, we have several examples in the state of Texas this summer. We've had two examples of uh, cats that were part of feeding operations that um, bit individuals and they ended up being rabid. Um, individuals had to undergo rabies prophylaxis and so forth, so that it is a definite problem. Where I live in the subdivision, an elderly couple just fed the cats and it had a lot of problems. They attracted you know, more cats, those cats reproduced. It also attracted rats, which, you know, got into people's backyards and, you know, chewed up their uh, hot tubs and electrical wiring. People who are supporting these programs with full knowledge that these cats are out there as, as uh, non-native mid-sized predators that may be impacting on these endangered species um, I believe that there are some potential legal concerns there and some legal justification um, for ensuring that these colonies do not persist. Texas is the number one destination for bird watchers in the world. There is no location on the globe which attract as, as many bird watchers on an annual basis as Texas. And yet, we've not yet grasped the fact that not only is this predation a threat to the species involved, but it's also a threat economically where birding has become such a central part of the economy, particularly in the southern part of our state. Every time they come out to feed the cats, they are detracting from my personal enjoyment of the same area that they are, they are using. TNR advocates are compassionate people, but they are not considering these problems fully and fail to take into account the welfare of birds and other wildlife. A better solution is to trap, neuter, and remove feral cats, then relocate them to enclosed cat sanctuaries or shelters, or to adopt them out to safe and comfortable homes. Some of them you can see that were born here could be adoptable, um, like this one right here isn't afraid of people. What we're really trying to focus on here is to trap and relocate the cats outside of the Big Pine Key, where we have endangered species throughout the island to a cat sanctuary that was established in Georgia. Um, so I'd like to think of it more of a trap, neuter, relocate program. Trap, neuter, and release is not solving the feral cat problem. Instead, it is allowing public nuisance, health, and liability issues to grow. We need to change the R in TNR from release to remove. To find out more, please see American Bird Conservancy's website at www.abcbirds.org.